Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. It is the 4th of May, a Wednesday. My name is Christopher Aaron, and this is the iGold Advisor channel. We will be looking at the action in gold and silver, and we'll be doing an around the world today. We haven't done this in some time. I need this for myself, and I believe there are some people out there who are in other countries other than the United States, so we will be getting into that today. Gold and silver in many different world currencies. It's very important. As you know, I focus on the charts. If you're new to this channel, that may be new for you. There are reasons behind that. I think it's too easy to get lost in the fundamental news, to cherry pick a piece of news and say, because this news, therefore, the market is going to do this. And really, if someone is doing that, they are simply selecting the one piece of news that they are favoring to tell you what is going to happen. The truth is, there are millions and perhaps billions of people involved in these markets, each one thinking a separate thing at the same time. Some people care about that news. Other people don't even know about it. So by focusing on the charts, we are looking at the sum of every single buy and sell order that appears on the markets. That's why I do that. If anyone shows you a chart over a year or six months, you should ask to say, what does that chart look like over five years? What about over a generation? What about in another currency? So that's why we do what we do here. What's happening in gold and silver is a worldwide phenomenon. Thank you for being with me. I just wanted to say quickly, thank you for everyone who's writing comments. I really appreciate that. Again, I do see all the comments. I'm not always able to respond to every single one, but I really appreciate you being there and writing. I also appreciate the people who are writing private emails to me. People who are inquiring about the premium service that I do offer. Thank you. And if that's not for you, that's fine as well. I produce these videos for free because I believe there is something significant happening here that we should all try to be on the same page about as best as possible. Also, I wanted to say thank you for everyone who um, has donated. That was so amazing to me when that first happened a couple months ago and people asked me if they could donate. And I said, you know what, that would, that would be nice. I appreciate that. And so I set up that patron account. So for anyone who has donated, these videos do take a number of hours for me to produce. So I'm very thankful for that. As we look at gold over the last three days, not a whole lot I can say, except we made a note of this in the premium update on the weekend to watch the 1305 region as our first initial target for potential resistance in gold. Notice the price on Monday got right up to about 1303 before coming back down. So we've come back down about $25 from the high, and I noticed that there is a sense of unease in the precious metals community. Just based on some articles that I see and sometimes comments that are written on various articles. So this is healthy. It's healthy to have a sense of fear when things move opposite us, but we have to keep that fear in perspective. So that's what I attempt to provide here as we switch over and look at silver the last three days, coming right up to $18. Now, mind you, two or three weeks ago, we were talking about silver in the 15s. And now we briefly touched 18 before coming back to the low to mid 17s. And there's been a lot of fear.
Let's start with gold, just going to look at US dollars here first, and then we'll get to around the world. Here's the point that I want to make about gold. At this juncture, we have seen in the chart action, a two and a half year final decline of the nearly five year total decline. We're not going to even look at the long term charts in this video. But we're zooming in here on the last three years of the decline, basically. And we saw the break in January before what has been now a gentle uptrend forming. Now, it took, if you measure from this high, the final part of the decline in 2013, to the final low for the bear market that we are calling in December, it took two and a half years for gold to move from 1420 down to 1045. Two and a half years. Can we possibly fathom that it might take two and a half years to get from this low back to 1420 through a back and forth gentle uptrend? a spike, a drop lower, a consolidation. Can we imagine that? This would frustrate. This would be the worst thing in the world for those people who are trying to tell you at every little peak, this is the end. Gold's going straight down from here. It would be the worst thing for them. It would also be the worst thing for the Armageddon type bulls. And you know who I'm talking about. Those people who tell you gold is going to $5,000 this year. Silver is going to triple digits this year. I would encourage you to make note of these people. And if silver, in fact, does not go to triple digits this year, I would encourage you to write down those names and perhaps consider that they were being a little bit sensational in those claims. What I see from a technical perspective is the absolute best setup for long term investors in either gold, silver, or the mining equities. The absolute best setup, which is a gentle, slow, two steps forward, one and a half steps back uptrend. And if it takes the price of gold, if it takes this another two years to get back to 1420, I would be so happy. I would be so happy. A nice, slow uptrend would be the absolute best thing for the type of work that I tend to focus on for my own investing. I like to do a little bit of trading. I like to take those profits and invest that in physical metal. And I like to buy quality mining companies that are going to profit over the long run. This looks very good for me, whether or not the price of gold comes back down into this trend channel here, maybe back even to 1260, 1250 or whether or not it gears up in the next week to advance slightly higher and finally break this resistance level. 1305 is our resistance level. Why? Look at this high right here from early 2015, 1305. Shown in the red circles. 1305, the next resistance is 1345. After that, 1390. After that, 14.20. These are levels where people, fundamentally speaking, people bought gold at 13.05. The price then collapsed underneath them and they were underwater for a year and a half. And when the price finally gets back to 13.05, they say, get me out. I'm done with this. I'm back to even. I don't want to think about gold ever again. And you know what? There's nothing wrong with that. To each their own. For those people, that is fine. I happen to have a longer term perspective. I think most people here do. 
But there's no problem for those people that want to get out back where they bought. So that's why we see this action in the metals. We see it hit up like this, come back down and hit this exact same level before dropping back down. All of these lines that you see represent fundamental trends that are forming. Here's the color system for that. We look at silver, still US dollars. We'll get to around the world in just a moment. Silver in US dollars. We have this pattern, which is called an inverse head and shoulders pattern. It is complete, it is confirmed. The target for this pattern is between 50, uh, excuse, excuse me, 1850 and 1875. That target has not been hit yet. I still believe silver is going to move higher in the short run over the next one or two or three weeks to hit that target before we will then begin to form the rounded shoulder, which may be a more severe dip over the course of the summer. Zooming this in, we can see this action here, silver hitting right up to 18, a few cents higher on the COMEX in the futures market before falling back for a couple of days today. I think this looks very good. I expect silver to continue to move higher over the next day or two, the next few weeks. I won't be satisfied with this pattern, this inverse head and shoulders pattern until I see around 1850 hit. So keep that in mind. But then we're going to be looking at a probably a more serious correction is what I'm anticipating at this point. We'll talk about that when we get there. We're not there yet. Around the world. I'm thankful if you're tuning in from the United Kingdom or from Europe. Perhaps Northern Europe where they don't use the Euro. I apologize that I cannot do all these videos in every single currency like the, the kroner from uh, Norway and Sweden. So I focus on the Euro. There's a lot of correlation between those markets, of course. So I hope this helps somewhat. We'll cover the Canadian dollar, of course, our lovely neighbors to the north. And we will cover the Australian dollar. I visited Australia a few years ago. I really loved it there. I especially loved the southern and eastern coastline. I never made it to the west. So if you're in Perth or that area, I'm sorry I didn't visit that area, but I loved the country. So we will be looking at all these currencies. We have to put this into perspective. Beginning with gold priced in Canadian dollars. Pay attention to the long-term trends shown in magenta, the primary trend lines shown in blue, and especially in this, the broken trend lines shown in turquoise. Of course, we always have black being the horizontal support and resistance lines. And we have silver on most of these charts being Fibonacci retracement lines. Fibonacci, of course, being the mathematician from Italy several hundred years ago who discovered that all these patterns in nature that we see, such as in seashells and waves and hurricanes, repeat throughout nature. It's almost a fingerprint of so, an encoding in nature. And we see these patterns in the markets too, human beings being a component of nature, these charts that we look at being the sum of human beings, therefore a part of nature. Gold and Canadian dollars over the last 15 years, 
Notice how the price came all the way right back down to this long-term linear trend line, rising trend line, right here in 2014 before rising. We talked about this green circle being a target right around 1750. If you go back three or four months and watch some of those videos, we said the price was probably going to hit this green target, which corresponds to the parallel trend line that the price of gold is now in in Canadian dollars higher. That was hit before we come back down to this region that we find ourselves in, just in this back and forth uptrend. The downtrend being broken in no uncertain terms, broken in late 2014. This was a year and a half ago, ago and the price is now rising higher in Canadian dollar gold. Not that far away from the all-time high. Zooming this in, look at this beautiful trend pattern that we're in here. Up, down, up, down, up, coming back down, making another attempt higher. I mean, basically, you're looking at a $300 range, which is fine. It confounds the bulls. It confounds the bears. It's best for long-term investors to be accumulating. And it's also good for trading if you like to do that sort of thing, if you like to try to time these highs, especially if you're using the paper funds. That's what the paper funds are good for. You shouldn't be trading the physical metal. There's too much premium involved. You have to pay those premiums. It's a pain to try to sell and ship and then try to buy back and deal with all that. No, if you're trading, you want to trade either futures or ETFs or options. All topics for another day. Gold and Canadian dollars looking very strong as we speak. Moving on to gold in British pounds. Breaking through its downtrend just in January. Look at the break right there. Holding at the long-term uptrend. Gold and British pounds still in a bull market. As we zoom that in, we see after breaking that downtrend here shown in turquoise, consolidating at this resistance level from early 2015 before the next move higher will take us probably to around 960 British pounds before there will be some more consolidation before an assault on the all-time high happens within the next several years. Looking at gold in euros, Similar pattern. Notice all these correlations. Long-term linear uptrend. Broken downtrend in the short run. Broken and now consolidating. Back in a bullish posture. Where? Right before the 1160 area in British pounds. So I expect British pound gold, uh, excuse me, euro gold, this is euros we are speaking about right now, golden euros, hitting 1160, coming back down, breaking through this line. I expect another one or two attempts throughout the course of the next year at 1160 before we break through this and begin the assault at the all-time high in euros. Nowhere near a bear market, mind you. Gold in Australian dollars, a little bit different here due to the, the weakness that had come into the Australian dollar over the last few years. Gold did not act so perfect technically, but notice, so the long-term uptrend here was broken. It was broken right here by this red circle, the long-term linear uptrend only to come back and break the downtrend. So basically gold in Australian dollars, as far as trend analysis, is in no man's land. It's not in a trend. What it is, is, is making a new challenge at the all-time highs. The all-time high resistance zone for gold in Australian dollars in that target of 1825 per ounce 
We are not that far away from that. 110 Australian dollars away from the all-time high in a major world currency such as this. What is the bear market that people were speaking about a few months ago? I'm not sure. We see gold in all these currencies making significant advances toward the all-time high. Perhaps U.S. dollars being the weakest out of all those. But we look at all these different currencies and we say, what is the trend that is coming? It's going to be following these other currencies. As we look at silver, once again, starting at the beginning, silver in Canadian dollars, major decline from the all-time high at 47 Canadian dollars. The first decline broken in 2014. This nice dish-shaped bottoming pattern forming here just broken in the last month. Just telling us that the final part of the decline has happened. We are calling this a bottom at 16 Canadian dollars. And mind you, this is not too late to get involved. We had a bottom here in 60, at $16 in 2015. And here we are at 22. Yes, you've missed the beginning part of that move. Still a fraction of the all-time high. There's plenty of time to be involved in silver in Canada after we use technical analysis to identify a very strong candidate for the bottom. Look at this beautiful. I mean, look at the downtrend here. So we had a downtrend forming in Canadian dollars hit once, twice, three times, broke into the upside, which then held it. A lesser downtrend forming one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight attempts to break this downtrend before the ninth breaks it. We move up, we come back down and hit that line before we start to move away. Silver and Canadian dollars looking very strong. The key resistance is going to be 26 Canadian dollars. So mind you, I believe so it took to get from 26 down to the low, took about a year and three months. It's been about a year and three months from this point. So we could be looking at a run fairly soon back to the 26 level. And then you could have an inverse type of shoulder formation forming here in Canadian silver. A beautiful saucer shaped bottom forming here in this metal, which is just so incredibly excellent for long term accumulation. Anyone who has bought Canadian silver below 26 over the long run will be very happy. Mark my words, this might take five or seven years for you to realize that. But this is what the charts are showing. Switching over to silver in British pounds, similar situation here, long term linear uptrend, broken downtrend, saucer formation forming here from 16 British pounds down to nine British pounds, the final part of the decline took two and a half years. It could take two and a half years to regain 16. Keep this in mind. There's no need to panic buy. If you're new to this market, I would say make a nice big first purchase. Get your hands on some quality metal or some quality mining equities and then sit back for a month or two or three and look to see if we get a little correction, 10 or 20% correction at some point this year. That would be a good time for your next purchase. Zooming that in, we can see that beautiful saucer shape. It's so similar in several of these currencies. Looking at silver in euros now, very similar long-term linear uptrend, downtrend broken, resumption of the bull market. That said, this is going to take some time 
to work off the resistance in euros right around 16 and then around 18 and a half euros. This will be very, very big resistance here back from 2013. A lot of the people in Europe who bought silver at 18 and a half euros in 2013 will be selling their silver when the price gets back to that level. They will be. We can reason with them all that we want and say, look, the price is going higher. It doesn't matter. They are going to sell and the price will back off when it hits this important level. So that's the value of this type of analysis. Identifying those levels where sellers will come in. We've seen them before and there are some remaining. We can see the final bottoming formation here. We talked about this a few months ago. Beautiful triangle shaped consolidation here in silver. I had drawn this green circle to say at some point before this green circle, the price is going to break in one direction or another. I said my bias is to think it's going to break to the upside, but I have to let the charts tell me. And sure enough, as shown here in the highlight, we have broken above. Here will be that important resistance zone we talked about right around at 18.5. It's going to take some time. It's going to churn some back and forth before we get to that level and have that challenge. Finally, silver in Australian dollars. Again, very similar. Long-term linear uptrend, broken downtrend. Zooming that in, we can definitively call this the bottom. Look at this beautiful. For anyone who pays attention to uh, my premium reports where I talk about stage analysis, you're looking at a stage one base forming here in the silver market on Australian dollars. Anything below 28 really is going to be a stage one base, especially below 24. You might be looking at a total of three, four, five years of consolidation between, let's call it 19 and 24. A beautiful long-term consolidation. So what is happening? What do you think is happening this entire time? As the metal is moving back and forth in these ranges, weak hands are selling and strong hands are buying. The metal is getting transferred from people who don't want it to people who do want it. People who do want this metal are going to be holding this metal for a number of years, which is why this bottom is forming. These people are refusing to sell their metal. Fundamental reasons cause the actions that we are seeing in the charts. The executive summary. Nature contains no perfectly straight lines. This should be apparent as we look at this beautiful painting of a wave. Prepare for a wild ride or find another market. The volatility that we are now seeing, for example, silver touching 18 and dropping back 70 cents or so in US dollars is just the beginning. This is going to get so much more volatile before the targets that we are mentioning are hit. So if this is not comfortable for you, I suggest you find another market. I really do. And it's no better or no worse. It's not a character judgment. It's just an assessment of self. I don't have every single dollar that I own in silver or gold for this reason. Sometimes I need to pay the rent. Sometimes I need something that's not going to fluctuate quite so wildly in the short run. So there are other markets that can serve that function, even though we have to admit over the intermediate and the long run, cash and bonds are going to be losing a lot of value as governments are printing these into the infinite oblivion 
having no value to that cash, nothing tangible backing it. We are looking to protect ourselves and we are looking to profit from a move that we are anticipating over the next few years. It's just beginning, as is the volatility that we are going to see. That said, the trend is now higher. This is confirmed around the world. When we look at all these major currencies, these trends are confirmed. This is not just a US dollar phenomenon. Even though, for example, the mining sector must sell their gold and silver for US dollars. So that does bear a significant impact on the entire sector. Even though US dollar is still the world's reserve currency to some extent, even though gold and silver are traded in US dollars around the world as far as settlement goes, settlement of futures contracts, etc. Even with all that said, this is a worldwide phenomenon that is going on right now. And we are confirming that today in the charts that we are seeing. Thank you so much for being with me. The next update will be a week from today. Prepare for this volatility. It's going to be exciting. It's going to be good. And I will see you next week. Thank you.